Okay, here we are back again. Oh my goodness. Um, Chris has been on the show before, Chris Tro. Uh, he's a Rotarian and well, actually started the foundation. He's done all sorts of great um, things. But he's involved with the Class Afloat. And we're going to let Chris tell us a little bit about Class Afloat to get the picture started. And then we're going to talk about these wonderful participants. Chris, take it away. Tell All us right, a little bit about you, it. Yes. Uh, so uh, I am a Rotarian, but then I've also got involved with something called Class Afloat. And just to set the scene here, I'll give you some background about what Class Afloat is. It's a school for that, and students there are in grades 11, 12, and uh, first year college. And uh, the campus, in this case, is a three-masted sailing ship that sails the Atlantic Ocean and visits four continents and roughly 12 cities in uh, about a dozen countries. So uh, it's, it's quite an experience. And there's about 60 kids on the ship who can be from uh, just about anywhere in the world. Most of them are from North America, but there are certainly people from as far away as the Orient. Um, and the school is not about learning to sail. The school is about. But they have uh, to do that, don't they? They have to well, kind of learn just, a little bit. Well, they participate in uh, uh, the sailing aspect of it. And, and Cody's uh, been on one, so we're going to get that from Cody. Yep. And, <laughs> and climbing the mass is an optional thing. You know, that's one of the, one of the <laughs> advanced like things fun. you can do or not do. Uh, but there's the opportunity to, that, to do that. And so it's the, the school is about uh, uh, life experience, leadership, and adventure in addition to your regular studies for the courses that you're taking on the school. What kind of courses would they take there? Um, well, it, grade 11, grade 12, and so you're actually university. taking academic courses. Yeah, it's regular. Okay. Yes, and then the kids who are on there for grade 11 and 12 are working pretty hard because they're trying to get their uh, the school studies done. So as they well. get credit for these courses, which uh, yes. is, goes towards their graduation. That's right. And same for the university students; they take courses and it's distance learning for the university students. So when they get into port, then they communicate with the professor uh, via the internet. And oh, okay. a, lot, a lot of their a lot of their materials are electronically based. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just to jump forward now to uh, how I got involved with this uh, greater level, uh, my son was on the ship in the 2013-2014 year. And you brought him on the show. And he was on the show. And, and I was very impressed by the adventure, the whole thing. My son and I both just enjoyed it so much, the adventure and, and, uh, and the excitement, uh, and particularly for being a parent. Uh, that's just great to be able to uh, be involved with this kind of thing. And so um, uh, I began thinking about uh, what a great opportunity it was and how it might be nice if, if if there was an opportunity was extended to kids who might otherwise not be able to afford because to they do charge for this obviously yeah and it's just such a great experience so um, I started thinking about getting a foundation and uh, that was a short a long story short uh, at this point now we, we I have a foundation formed and uh, I found the form uh, I formed a foundation in conjunction with a number of alumni from the class float program these would be uh, students who had graduated earlier some of them a decade ago and some of the parents and uh, so we have the foundation formed. Uh, the people who are on the board in the foundation are right across the United States. Uh, is this and a pretty popular uh, uh, program in this area? I mean, uh, do a lot of the students, because we got three here. <laughs> that seems like a lot for you know, a program with, that only has 60 kids and three of them from our area. It's, yeah. So we're going to talk with each of them too. Yes, okay, and most of them, it's been, been uh, primarily focused in Canada, so it's better known in Canada and, and less known here, and that's one of the things I'd like to try and do is make it better known in the United States. And uh, so anyway, at this point now with the foundation, we've got three students, and you see them here, and I'm going to introduce them in a minute. Uh, just quickly, I wanted to give some acknowledgement to something, an organization, a local organization called Sponsor a Scholar, uh, and uh, one of our students is a Sponsor a Scholar graduate. Sponsor a Scholar is a program that uh, helps high school students get uh, uh, tuition and stuff through their through their uh, high school years, and uh, uh, I've connected with them to find my scholars that I, that I'm going to uh, uh, give a scholarship to for class of float. And the the schools are pretty receptive to this, right? Is that correct? I mean, uh, well, because the learning, school has to, they out have there. to uh, they have to agree to participate that these kids can take these courses. Is that to be part uh, of well, no. This this the highest that we were offering scholarships. So it's really up to the student and the school's participation. And it would be to make it available to, to, so that the students can see that such a scholarship exists. Exists exactly. Okay, and sponsor a scholar. I have a particular relationship with them because they're going to help me find scholars um, who uh, are deserving and uh, and meet the uh, academic criteria. I'd like to go so, to Cody yeah, here. So let's introduce some of our students yeah. here. Uh, go ahead, if you want to introduce. I was oh, going to just right. okay. I was gonna start out with Cody. Oh. All right, well, uh, Cody Nagayan is my first class float uh, uh, graduate. Uh, he's a graduate of, high, uh, of Scotia Glenville High School. And, uh, and I met uh, Cody through uh, some very good family friends, Ed and Linda Namowitz. So let me give the mic to uh, Cody. Cody. So Cody, uh, tell me, now you've been on one of these sales. 
Yes, I have. And uh, tell me what your experience was, because had you ever been on a tall sailing ship before? No, actually, it was uh, like it was my second time out in the ocean, but this was for a longer period of time. First time was on a fishing trip, so it wasn't really. It How was, was your trip? Did you? I mean, was it uh, kind of like, because you, you met a lot of people you did not know. Yeah, at first it was overwhelming because you're meeting a lot of people you don't know. And when I got on, I got on second semester. So a lot of the students already formed relationships and they were friends with everyone. So I was getting on not knowing anyone and they knew each other already. So at first it was a little overwhelming, but after a while everything fell into place and it, it was good. I really enjoyed it. So Yeah, so you in. learned how to sail too. Yeah, I did. For the most part, there's still a couple things that I need to work on, but it's there's a lot to learn. So, so you're doing it twice, which is really a, a pretty amazing that you can get to do it twice. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll go to our um, our next guest uh, who's sitting right next to me, and that would be uh, Megan. Uh, Megan, tell me how you got involved. Um. <laughs> well, I Cody and I have uh, we. Actually friends. dated. Well, yeah, yeah <laughs> I guess for a pretty long time now. And so um, when Chris presented this idea to Cody, Cody and I, you know, were around each other quite often. And so Chris then came around kind of quite often. And so we established our connection through that. And I mean, Chris, he's he's amazing, and he uh, he constantly surprises me. And this was probably the biggest one that he could have given me was the uh, <laughs> opportunity to go. And um, it was just kind of weird being able to go with someone that I know, and then he... So you're all going on the same yeah. one, yeah. and Michaela yeah. will be talking with you in a moment. Yeah, but it was just kind of crazy how now I get to travel with one of my best friends since uh, what, elementary school, because she was in the Sponsor Scholar Program, and Chris just randomly chose her, and so I, I feel like I've already, you know, I, I have a piece have of Have you home. ever been on a tall sailing ship? Uh, I went on this one for, you know, a couple of times, but I didn't actually sail. I went on it because I went to go visit him in Antigua, but other than that, no. Antigua, I love Antigua. It's it, so was, beautiful. it was amazing. <laughs> Island, yeah. So they, so, so you could actually fly in and say, hey, I want to say hi to you, right? Yeah, I actually had uh, one of my interviews on the ship itself with the, um, with the, one of the directors. It was Bruce Middleton. He was, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, a parent course that, uh, halfway through a term, there'll be a parent port. And so we attended one of the parent oh, ports, oh, to take down some clean clothes for the yeah, young man Yeah, so they have a few clothes to wear. And, uh, <laughs> take them home, wash them. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, you are, um, how did you get involved? Well, I mean, obviously you, you got a connection yeah. there. Have you ever been on the ocean? Uh, not at all. I've been about three feet in on like vacations and stuff, but I'm actually the sponsor of Scholar graduate that Chris and Megan were talking about. Uh, so I found out about it separately, but it's also weird because I worked with Megan and Cody. Um, I met Cody and then Megan was my best friend, so I got her into the job and then we ended up knowing each other. And then, So we knew about the program separately, but together, and then it's just weird how it all worked out. But yeah. Are you excited about I, this? I'm very excited. It wasn't in the forecast for me at all. I um, applied to Colgate University, actually, and I didn't get accepted. So You're both graduates. Yeah. 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 They're graduates. So, they're all graduates. These are yeah. graduates of Schenectady High yeah. School in Cody, Scotia. Yeah. But it wasn't, I did, wasn't planning on this at all. I was applying to colleges still even the day before I found out about it. And then I got into counselor who met um, Chris at a banquet for Sponsor Scholar. I was like, hey, do you want to travel abroad? And I was like, yeah, like, let's find out about it. And yeah, little did I'll I go know. to Paris yeah. for the weekend, Yeah, right? that's what I thought. <laughs> it was like maybe like a couple months in like Europe or something. But no, just spending nine months on a tall ship with 60 other students. So it's a little different than what I imagined, but it's Well, great. to me, one of the strangest things would be food. I mean, uh, because, well, I guess they do <laughs> go into ports of call to get fresh food. I mean, how did, what was the food like? Uh, it was good. He's a great chef. He cooked on the ship for a Yeah, bit. one day they let the students take over where they pretty much did everything. They maneuvered, they cooked, they, we clean all the time. Every day you clean, so you do have routines in what you do every day. But the, the food was really good. Um, in port, I like to try different foods, so I was more adventurous than other students. So you, when you went into port, you could get off the ship and yeah, then? Yeah, um, depending on what time you got into port, um, like the first day, say you arrived at noon time, you wouldn't be able to get off the ship until 3, 4 o'clock because classes still are going on right. until then. And then after that time, you are allowed to leave until about 10 or 11 o'clock, depending on where we were, because some cities were more dangerous than others mm -hmm. at night. Yeah. So well, and they, they had to protect you guys. Yeah. 
Tell and me you about actually always had to be in a group of four so that you were always. You oh, know, you were with a group. Yes. Yeah, so, always. So that you. Yeah, so you, I you like don't get that. lost and you don't get hurt or whatever. Say, and if get one hurt, gets crazy, the other three will hold yeah, them so down, right? One person, <laughs> if one person gets hurt, one person will stay with them, and then two others will go get help. Get help. So that, yeah. Not that it, that it would no, ever happen. No, 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 no. Tell, tell me about the, about the classes. I mean, because are you in a classroom or do you sit on the deck? What, what happens? Um, well, some classes are actually on the deck. You can sit on the deck, depending on where we are, because sometimes it's rougher the seas. But for the most part, you're in... You're in, in, on the inside where like you have your meal periods, you're eating, that's where the classes attend. There's little curtains that separate the classrooms. So math can be right here, and then there'll be a curtain, and then there'll be a science class, and then another curtain, and then there'll be an English class. It all depends on what you take. There's not much of a selection for college and university students, but you can still take you know high school courses on the ship, just a you know, refresher. AP classes, yeah. maybe sort of like, yeah, yeah, that's exciting. So, yeah. what what are you girls deciding to take, or, or have you made any decision? Um, I'm taking physics, uh, the astrology aspect of it, because like you're under the oh, stars. Oh, you're, you're you're right there under yeah. the stars. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that both semesters. And you can say, wait, they're not heading the right direction now. <laughs> <laughs> um, both semesters, there's uh, what were the other ones? That we just marine biology, marine biology, biology. communication, See, sociology, these are courses that yeah. work psychology. very well on top of the yeah. psychology, especially because one is yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like a leadership course where they kind of teach you how to um, establish yourself and you know control situations and stuff. There, um, there's a few other yeah. ones. I'm stepping out of uh, my comfort zone a little bit because I don't really, I'm not really the best in like science and math and stuff like that. So I am taking the marine biology and ast astrology and all those courses just to, I might as well, if I'm going to go out of my comfort zone, just go way out. <laughs> go way out. Well, you may find that that is, you know, unless you're exposed to it, you really don't know what you're going to end up liking because it's one of those things that you go, well, sometimes you just have to go out of your comfort zone and just have some fun with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, how long are you going to stay involved in this? It looks like you, you've made a commitment here. Life work. Life's work here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. I'm enjoying it. It's great to be around young people and, uh, and have an excuse to travel some to some country and uh, and visit them and uh, just watch them also. Do you have a secret desire to get on one of those ships? Mm, well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I probably get seasick, but uh, yeah, well, no. you know, I've thought maybe about maybe if you're in the Caribbean I, somewhere, I, I might. Better. Yeah, I've thought about that because um, I, I was on a, a a ship just from Florida to Puerto Rico, and oh my gosh, I don't know what the what was going on in the water, but. I did not feel well, yeah. but they say the bigger the ship, the least, the less you have a problem. And you do adjust a lot. A lot of people yeah. Yeah. initially, if you're don't look at the horizon. Is so, that what they say? You, you're supposed yeah. to. It takes it takes yeah. a day or two, and you can adjust to it. So. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be cool. <laughs> You'll have stories to tell your grandkids. I'm sure. And lots of pictures. And lots of pictures, but I think you're going to have made a lot of lifelong friends that you might not mm. have ever met or known about, and you're going to have some wonderful friendships and places to visit that you won't even, <laughs> didn't even know about, right? That's a very big part, yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you all for being here today. What a wonderful uh, program it is. And I, I truly envy you all for being able to get out there and do that. It just sounds like a wonderful adventure, and it's one you'll remember forever, I'm sure. Thanks, Chris, for making this all happen, oh, at least promoting it. it. Yeah. Okay, here we are back again. Oh my goodness, um, Chris has been on the show before, Chris Tro. Uh, he's a Rotarian and well, actually started a foundation. He's done all sorts of great um, things, but he's involved with the Class Afloat. And we're gonna let Chris tell us a little bit about Class Afloat to get the picture started. And then we're gonna talk about these wonderful participants. Chris, take it away. Tell all us right, a little bit about Ryan. it. Yes, uh, so uh, I am a Rotarian, but then I also got involved with something called Class Afloat. And just to set the scene here, I'll give you some background. Got him on the show. And he was on the show. And, and I was very impressed by the adventure, the whole thing. My son and I both just enjoyed it so much, the adventure and, and, uh, and the excitement, uh, and particularly for being a parent. Uh, that's just great to be able to uh, be involved with this kind of thing. And so um, I began thinking about uh, what a great opportunity it was and how it might be nice if, if, if there was an opportunity was extended to kids who might otherwise not be able to afford because to they do the charge ship. for this obviously yeah and it's just such a great experience so um, I started thinking about getting a foundation and uh, that was a sale 
the, the school is about. But they have uh, to do that, don't they? They have to well, kind of learn a little bit. Well, they participate in uh, uh, the sailing aspect of it. And, and Cody's uh, been on one, so we're going to get that from Cody. Yep, and, <laughs> and climbing the mast is an optional thing. You know, that's one of the, one of the <laughs> adventure like things fun. you can do or not do. Uh, but there's the opportunity to, that, to do that. And so it's the, the school is about uh, uh, life experience, leadership, and adventure in addition to your regular studies for the courses that you're taking on the school. What kind of courses would they take there? Um, well, it, grade 11, grade 12, and so you're actually university. taking academic courses. Yeah, it's regular. Okay. Yes, and then the kids who are on there for grade 11 and 12 are working pretty hard because they're trying to get their uh, the school studies done. So as they well. get credit for these courses, which uh, yes. is, goes towards their graduation. That's right. And same for the university students; they take courses and it's distance learning for the university students. So when they get into port, then they communicate with their professor uh, via the internet. And oh, okay. a, lot, a lot of their a lot of their materials are electronically based. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just to jump forward now to uh, how I got involved with this uh, greater level, uh, my son was on the ship in the 2013-2014 year. And you brought on about what class of float is. It's a school for that, and students there are in grades 11, 12, and uh, first year college. And uh, the campus, in this case, is a three-masted sailing ship that sails the Atlantic Ocean and visits four continents and roughly 12 cities in uh, about a dozen countries. So uh, it's, it's quite an experience. And there's about 60 kids on the ship who can be from uh, just about anywhere in the world. Most of them are from North America, but there are certainly people from as far away as the Orient. Um, and the school is not about learning to 